My name is Stephanie and I'm one of the managers here. I've been climbing for about 15 or 16 years. Um, we get a lot of questions about what people should carry for gear outside. And so we thought it would be fun to do a video about what we each carry in our own personal gear kits. There are so many options out there and our retail buyers spend a lot of time talking to all different people to find out what gear works best for us as climbers. And so it's important that you know that these opinions that we'll be talking about are mine and what I find works for me. But you should talk to our staff, talk to friends and find out what will work best for you. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to be talking about what I carry in my personal sport climbing bag. Okay, so we're going to start with my bag and I like to pack everything from lightest to heaviest so that it carries well when you're hiking. So at the top of my bag is my puffy jacket, which I think is an essential thing for every climber to have when they're climbing. I like this one because it has a wind and water resistant lining, which makes it a little bit warmer and also windproof, which is really great. It's essential because every climber you get warm when you're climbing, but you get cold when you're not climbing. So if you're belaying or your, pro your partner is projecting something, you need a really big jacket that you can throw on. I like this one because it's nice and big and I can put it on over everything. In addition, it has great big pockets. And so on cold days, you want to be able to put your shoes inside there and then you can zip it up and you actually have room to put your shoes and even a hot water bottle, which will keep both toasty so that when you start to climb, your shoes aren't cold. Okay, so next in my bag, I actually have my climbing gear. Um, and I actually store them in Patagonia's black hole packing cube. I think these are really great because they keep your gear really organized and they're dirt and abrasion resistant so you can throw them around. But as you'll see as I unzip them, they actually keep your gear really, really well contained. Okay, so inside my packing cube, I store all of my climbing gear. Um, and so the first thing we're gonna talk about is my harness and kind of my belay gear my belay device and whatnot. So the first thing is my harness. Um, I use the Petzl Selena harness. Again, my gear is kind of used because I wear it a lot. Um, I like this harness because it's really lightweight. It really works great for sport climbing because of that, but it's comfortable. Um, in particular for me, and I'm short, I'm five foot two inches. I like the Petzl harnesses because they have a lower rise. So that means when I sit in it, the waist part doesn't roll up and kind of right up into my ribs. It is, again, doesn't have any extra bells and whistles, so it doesn't have you know, adjustable leg loops. They do make harnesses that have other ones, but again, for me, this is what I find works the best. So after my harness, on this side, I store my belay equipment. So um, the first thing I have is my belay gloves, and I really like to use these leather ones. They're by Metolius, and the reason I like them is because they're very soft and supple. They keep my hands warm when it's cold outside, but most importantly, your rope gets really dirty when you're climbing outside, and so wearing gloves keeps your hands cleaner, which I kind of like. So. Um, and for belaying, I use the Petzl Grigri 2. Um, I like it because it has the auto brake assist feature. So it makes it really easy to belay, belay someone when they're hanging on their rope or when you need to feed slack and whatnot. I think it works really well. Um, and with that, I use the Black Diamond Gridlock Carabiner. I like um, screw gates versus auto locking gates because I like to physically screw my gates shut. Um, this one is nice because the way you use it is that it has this separate feature on it that you can put your belay device through this one and you can put your harness through that one and it prevents your carabiners from cross-loading, which is a really important thing when you're messing around with your belay device, your carabiner can unload and it can actually twist. And so carabiners are strongest when used in this longitudinal uh, method and so this prevents it from being able to be cross-loaded, which is used in the, the shorter method. Um, lastly are my belay glasses. Again, this is an, in an incredibly important thing for sport climbers. So this is um, their belay glasses by Y&Y. &Y. And I like these because there's many on the market, but for me, they fit my face the best. Um, I like that they have hinges. They also have adjustable nose pieces and replaceable ones. So again, I have kind of a smaller nose, so they stay on my face. But the way they work is they have a prism. So you look through one side and it actually enables you to see what's kind of above you so that you don't have to crane your neck when you're sport climbing. So I think they're really great. I also like the case that they come in because you can just zip them up because obviously they're kind of delicate and you're gonna be outside. Um, you can just zip them up and you can just clip them to your harness and you've got them on you whenever you're climbing. Okay, so on the other side of my packing cube, I store my shoes and kind of the other stuff that I use for climbing. So the first thing I'll talk about are my climbing shoes. I like the Scarpa Boost Stick. Um, this is my favorite shoe and I use it for everything. I think it works great for both technical as well as steep climbing. So I think it excels in places like Smith where you're doing technical climbing as well as places like Yosemite and Tuolumne where you're having to edge on granite. But it also works on really steep stuff and for towing in because it has have a slight downturn toe. Um, it's got nice, a lot of rubber on the top of the toe so it works great for toe hooking and it has a nice narrow heel. So for myself, I have a hard time finding shoes that I can heel hook well in, where my heel actually doesn't pull out of the shoe. And this one I feel like fits really well. 
In addition, it has a stiffer forefront, which means that um, for knee barring, which I'm, I climb most often at Jailhouse, and we do a lot of knee barring, it actually provides a lot of support and structure, but it still allows you to smear. So it's all the things I think kind of make a great all-around shoe if you're looking for a more technical advanced shoe. Next up, you'll see that I had it attached on what I call my dog draw. So this is something that every sport climber has. Um, it is something that you attach to the belay loop of your harness and then you can clip in direct to your, um, into the hanger. So it gives your climber a break. If you're not sure how to use one, I'd recommend researching it on the internet. But the things that I like about a dog draw are that you want to have, I use the Petzl Spirit Quick Draw. Um, it's a good length because I don't want it too short because it makes it harder to pull into the wall. Um, I like to have what's called a key nose lock because it won't get caught when you're trying to pull it out. Um, and really it's just a great kind of nice feature and I use it to attach my shoes because then everything is just kind of connected and all there when I walk to the base of the climb and it's, it's ready for me to go. In addition, I have my chalk bag. Um, so chalk bags are really personal. I think the most important thing is that you can fit your hand into it easily. You never want to have to be fighting to get your hands into your chalk bag. Um, it's good to have a brush holder. This is the sew oil brush. It's great to have because if holds are greasy, you want to be able to brush the chalk off. Um, I put mine in upside down so that it stays put a little bit better. And then um, other chalk bag features are you can find one that has a zipper or pocket in the back. Um, this enables you to put like some chapstick or if you're using it in the gym, you can put some money in it. So it just kind of keeps things nice and right there. Not very common in most sport climbers bag is the Prusik. So it's kind of funny. This is something I learned from a friend in Maple Canyon when we were climbing in the Pipe Dream Cave. So when you fall on lead, uh, you tend to fall a long way. And so you do this thing called boinking. Again, look it up if you don't know how to do it. Um, but what you can do is it's hard to grab a rope with your hands. So you can actually Prusik around the rope. You then would attach your draw to the Prusik around the rope and it provides a handle for you to boink your way up the climb. So again, look into this. Um, if you don't know how to do it, I would not recommend doing it until someone shows you. See qualified instruction. And last but not least in my bag, I have my warm up equipment. So um, shoulders are always something that I'm working on. So I have you know, just a TheraBand. I do my shoulder exercises before climbing. And I also have uh, the Black Diamond Forearm Trainer. This is something that you, know, you could use to train, but I actually use it to warm up my fingers before climbing. I do 10 squeezes on each hand and I repeat that 10 times. And I find that it just really gets my hands warmed up before I start climbing. Okay, so next in my bag, I also have my knee barring kit. I also keep that in another Patagonia black hole cube. Um, again, it's a little smaller size because I don't have as much in there. If you do want to know what, how I use things for knee barring, that could be another video. So let us know in the comments if that would be of interest to you. Okay, and so now we're actually getting to some of the heavier stuff in my bag. And I have to laugh because I don't actually always carry my draws and the rope together, but for the purposes of showing you what can fit in this bag, um, I have all of my draws here. And I actually have more than this, but this is what we generally bring in a, in a kit. Um, these are the Petzl Spear draws, and they're kind of messy because I just throw them in my bag, but they're, and they're attached through kind of another version of a Prusik. But the thing I like about them, they actually have uh, a nylon dog draw, which is nice. They are um, just really great for sport climbing because they have really smooth action. Again, that key nose that I was talking about on both sides, the bend gate, they're really easy to clip. They also have different lengths. Um, these are older ones. They actually have newer models right now, but they um, come in different lengths, which is really great because sometimes you need longer and shorter draws. And so like a shorter draw would be if you're projecting something and you can't do a bolt, then you want a shorter draw so that you're falling near to where that bolt was. A longer draw would be an example of when maybe the clipping stance is a little bit lower than you'd like it to be. So you have a longer draw and you can clip it lower and you can still reach it. Um, so yeah, these are great draws. Um, Again, draws, there's a ton of draws on the market and there's a lot of different varieties. I've used a bunch of different kinds. This is what I personally like. Um, but again, a lot of people have different opinions. Okay, and then what I always keep in my bag, and I actually I'll show you how I attach it in my bag because there's a nice little feature, is um, what we, we lovingly refer to as the little stiffy, but it's actually the Kong um, extended draw. And so you can see it's actually stiff, so it actually doesn't bend. And the nice thing about it is, again, I mentioned that I'm on the shorter side. Oftentimes when hanging draws outside, I can't quite reach the next hanger from the clipping stance. And so what you can do is you can actually open the gate and it locks open, and then you can see when it waits, it actually closes the gate. And it allows you, if you compare it to another draw, a significant distance. Because if I had to clip this draw, I would have to hold it here, but this draw, I can hold it here. So you can see it gives me another you know, six to eight inches on my reach that enables me to um, climb up and through it. Now keep in mind, this is not intended to be climbed on. It's sort of like aid gear, if you will. 
So you would clip it, you'd clip it through, and then you would get up to the draw and you would replace it with whatever draw that you wanted. And in that case, I'd probably use a longer one because again, it, if the clipping stance was low, then this gets me a little bit closer to the draw that I actually want to clip. And then you would take this off and you'd put it back on your harness and continue on your way. Okay, so um, next to my bag, I have my water bottle. I just like to use a basic one to keep. I find the clean canteens hold up um, well against damage. You can see I've dropped mine a few times. Um, and then lastly, we have in my bag is our rope. So again, this fits in there. Um, so the rope bag that I use is the Metolius Rope Master. Um, the reason I like it is that it's got a really nice big bag and as well as a really big tarp to put your rope on. So with sport climbing, um, you just actually kind of shove it into a rope bag and then the rope bag puts it away into a nice neat feature. The reason I like it, it also has a window in it so you can see which rope it is. So you can see this little window right here. So you tie a rope to it. I always tie the top of my rope there so that I always know that I'm grabbing the top of my rope. Um, and then again, a nice big tarp. It keeps your rope on the cleaner side so you can see that my rope's a little bit dirty. Um, and then the rope. So for the rope, we like to use the Sterling 9 to 80 meter. Um, we use an 80 meter because well, we, we're getting on longer climbs and we need to be able to have the length. And the 9 2 is nice because when you get to 80 meters, you're actually getting quite a heavy rope, so the 9 2 cuts down on the weight. And we found that the Sterling Arrow actually is the most resistant sheath because the thinner the rope, the less durable the rope is. Um, it does come in a variety of other features like bi-colored and dry. Neither of those things that we, I use, but some people like them. So the bi-color, you can tell when the middle point of the rope is. And with a dry rope, there's arguments that the additional um, coating that they put on the rope will reduce uh, wear on the rope because it prevents particles from getting into the rope. And of course, it also keeps it makes the rope a little bit more water resistant. Again, we're sport climbers, so we're not typically climbing in the rain, so it's not a big a deal. Um, and yeah, so that's my rope. Um, if I'm not gonna be sport climbing, I will typically go for a 9.4 or a 9.5. Again, because you get a little bit more durability um, with a thicker rope. Um, and then I'll get it in a 70 meter so that I don't have the extra 10 meters of the weight. Okay, and so now we're gonna talk about the bag that I use. I love this bag. It's definitely great for sport climbing, so I would recommend it for this type of sport. And the reason is that for trad and for, for bouldering, you'd have a different bag, but for trad climbing, you'd want something a little bit more portable. Um, but the biggest benefit of it is that it opens up into a crash pad, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so it's got padded straps, it has a padded waist belt. It's really comfortable. Um, again, for my shorter stature, it fits really well, but my husband's also carried it. A couple features that I really like about it are that it has a sealed bottom. So you can see like when it opens up, it actually doesn't, it has a, it, it won't, you won't lose anything out of the bottom of it, which is really nice. Um, it's also adjustable in size. So it has this, you know, Velcro part that you can actually make it wider or narrower depending on how much gear you need to carry, which makes it quite versatile. Um, and then when you open it up, you can see actually that you can lay it out on the ground and it provides a really clean spot for you to lay your gear down. So you're not getting your drawers and whatnot into the ground and getting dirty. And then I mentioned earlier that I store my little stiffy in there and these, they has little gear loops. And because this needs to stay straight, I actually just store it right there and it keeps it nice and flat so I don't bend it. Um, and then last but not least, it also has a removable, um, a removable lid so that you're not sitting on your stuff. So I find it a really versatile pack and I really like it. It also, you can lay it against rocks and sit in it, which is really great. So it provides you a nice comfortable spot to sit. It's insulated because it's kind of thick with foam. Um, so it keeps you dry and clean and it's just a great, it's a great bag. <laughs> okay, and so here's the lid of my pack and this is where you can store kind of any of your smaller stuff. And the one thing I wanted to show you is kind of my little various accessory things and this is just a little bag I got. Um, but inside of it, I keep some kind of pretty important things to sport climbing. Um, again, a headlamp, you always want a headlamp because you never know when you're gonna get caught outside. You know, I've got sunscreen, chapstick, I have, you know, hand sanitizer. Um, I also keep a Sharpie um, in case you want to write anything. And then also climbing finger tape, which is really important. Um, and this is actually something that I'd like to talk about. This is every climber, if you'll notice, um, it's sandpaper. So climbers use sandpaper, which seems counterintuitive to when your hands, you want to keep your skin thick. But you'll notice when you're climbing that because of the abrasion on the rock, it can cause either uh, little pieces of skin to stick up or particularly what we call jug rash, which is where it folds your skin together if you've been hanging onto a hold. And you want to sand it down. Obviously, you don't want to overdo it, but if you ever see any of those little pieces sticking up, you want to sand them down because 
If you um, leave them there, it can lead to a flapper. So if you climb again on it, it can pull on that skin and cause a flapper, which is worse. So good sandpaper is really important. And this is the Friction Labs um, file, which is really nice and it has replaceable sandpaper, which I like. Um, and then other things in here are just first aid kit items. I have band-aids, um, oh, bug repellent, always really important. I do have a knife because you never know when you need something, um, antibiotic ointment and nail clipper, which is really good to have, and Advil, which of course everyone uses. Um, all right, so that I always keep, and that pretty much sums up what I carry in my bag. Okay, and last but not least, this doesn't exactly go in my bag, because as you can see, it wouldn't fit, but this is called a stick clip, and I carry this every time I go sport climbing. Um, it's actually the end that you purchase, and this is just a painter pole of whatever length and size you want, but this is called the super clip. It um, basically allows you to put up draws, take down draws, or to hang up a rope on the first draw, or second draw if you can reach it. Um, again, absolutely essential. I don't like falling and hitting the ground, so I think it's a great thing to put on the first draw and start climbing so you don't have to worry about it. If you want to see a video, uh, we actually made a tip video about it. You can see the link down below in the description. Okay, so this is kind of the stuff that I carry in my everyday climbing bag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this or are interested in other types of videos, let us know in the comments below. Keep in mind, these are my personal opinions and the things that I've found work for me when I go out climbing. Talk to your friends or talk to our staff and be sure to put together the thing that works for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and again, I hope to see you outside climbing soon.